woke M&Ms have returned. The green M&M got her boots back, but apparently is now a lesbian, maybe. And there's also a plus-sized, obese, purple M&M. So we're going to cover that, of course, because that's what we do. Stop throwing away good food. Expiration dates are lying to you. Use by or best by dates just indicate when the food is freshest, not when it's unsafe to eat. These dates are completely made up by food producers and are not even regulated by the government. So how do you know when food has gone bad? Look at it, smell it, feel it. Use your senses and your common sense to determine if the food is still good. Hello and happy Black History Month. I'm sure many of you all woke up this morning and thought, how can I help that woman that does microaggressions videos on TikTok? She's Black, I think. Well, good news. I am Black, and if anyone is going to ask for a handout during Black History Month, it's me. I started a podcast with my friend Clara. You know Clara. NFL PR, this is Nino. Me and Clara started a podcast about books, and the first episode went live today, and you should really listen to it. It's called One More Chapter Podcast, and you can listen to it anywhere you get podcasts. And did you know that we both wear glasses in real life? Also, if you want to leave us a five-star review, you can. You can do that. If you thought, oh, I really want to type something up today, the five-star review is something that you could feel free to type up. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just throwing it out there as something that you can do if you feel like it. But if you don't feel like it, that's fine too. But if you do... Do you have tall buildings in Africa? No, we don't have tall buildings in Africa, but we have tall trees, just like this one. Yeah. Have you ever wondered why our political system is so broken? I'm going to be the bad guy, which I'm sure half the room would agree with anyway. And, um, and I want to get away with as much bad things as possible, ideally to enrich myself and advance my interest. I've enlisted all of you as my co-conspirators. So you're going to help me legally get away with all of this on a campaign that is entirely funded by corporate political action committees. Is that, is there anything that legally prevents me from doing that? No. Okay, so there's nothing stopping me from being entirely funded by corporate PACs, say from the fossil fuel industry, the healthcare industry, big pharma, I'm entirely 100% lobbyist PAC, and let's say I have some skeletons in my closet that I need to cover up so that I can get elected. Um, green light for hush money, I can do all sorts of terrible things, it's totally legal right now for me to pay people off, and that is considered speech. I use my special interest dark money funded campaign to pay off folks that I need to pay off and get elected. So now I'm elected, now I'm in, I've got the power to draft, lobby, and shape the laws that govern the United States of America. Any hard limit that I have in terms of what legislation I'm allowed to touch, are there any limits on the laws that I can write? There's no limit. So there's none. So I can be totally funded by oil and gas. I can be totally funded by big pharma. Come in, write big pharma laws, and there's no limits to that whatsoever. That's right. The next thing I want to do is get rich with as little work possible. That's really what I'm trying to do as the bad guy, right? So is there anything preventing me from holding stocks, say, in an oil or gas company, and then writing laws to deregulate that, that industry and cause, you know, that could potentially cause the stock value to soar and accrue a lot of money in that time. You could do that. So I could do that. I could do that now with the way our current laws are, are set up. Yes? Yes. Okay, great. Is it possible that any elements of this story apply to our current government and our current public servants right now? Yes. Yes. So we have a system that is fundamentally broken. We have these influences existing in this body, which means that these influences are here in this committee shaping the questions that are being asked of you all right now. Would you say that that's correct, yes. Mr. Marabani or Mr. Shaw? Yes.
we've been sold the lie that inflation is up because prices have to go up because the supply chain costs have gone up since COVID. In reality, companies have been experiencing record profits since the 19th 50s. The reason for this is because under capitalism, you've got two options to generate profit, either cut costs, so typically cut labor costs, which is our wages, or by increasing the price. But you can't increase the price unless your competitors agree to do the same thing. Hence why we see monopolies and oligopolies so commonly under capitalism, because then you can do both at the same time. All the companies get together and they agree to pay us shit and to charge us out the ass. You know, I'm really starting to suspect that maybe an economist anywhere is a threat to human rights everywhere. Words you didn't know that are racist. When they would say master bedroom, that was back in the days because it was the master's bedroom. The first documented use of the term master bedroom was in 1926. A newspaper laid out the floor plan for a Dutch colonial home in New York. At this point, slavery had been abolished in all northern states for the last 122 years. That was 1804, which was actually five years before Abraham Lincoln was even born. To do a picnic because they would pick a nick. This one is just ludicrous. The word picnic isn't even derived from English, so it certainly isn't an English slang word. In the mid 18th century, the word derived from the French word picnic, which denoted a social event at which each guest contributes to a share of the food, which is almost exactly how we use it today. My main account was banned at a million and a half followers. Make sure to follow for more content just like this. Thanks guys. I'm watching Hunger Games for the first time, and I saw this. And at 11, she earned it. She shot an arrow at your head. Well, at an apple. Near your head. Done. And then, why do you think we have a winner? What do you mean? I mean, why do we have a winner? I mean, if we just wanted to intimidate the districts, why not round up 24 of them at random and execute them all at once? Be a lot faster. Hope. Hope? Hope. It is the only thing stronger than fear. A little hope is effective. A lot of hope is dangerous. Spark is fine, as long as it's contained. So, so, contain it. Hope is a key factor of capitalism. Under feudalism, there was no hope, which is why they were constantly having peasant revolts and shit like that. Now under capitalism, people think that they're gonna be a millionaire, if not a billionaire, and we're just living like this John Steinbeck quote, as temporarily embarrassed capitalists. People think that if they work hard, they too can be a billionaire or a millionaire. However, the odds are stacked against them. However, let's say that everyone worked as hard as they possibly could and they all became owners. It would literally be the definition of socialism. Socialism, a political and economic theory of social organization which advocates the means of production, distribution, and exchange should be owned or regulated by the community as a whole. Let me give you a little bit too much hope. We don't have to continue playing the Hunger Games. We have the power to do something. So let's do something. Also, side note. Also, I hope that this theory holds up for the rest of the trilogy. I haven't watched it, so don't give me any spoilers. If someone ever approaches you and tries to rob you, tell them to stop. Ask them, is it necessary? Is it nice? Do you have my permission? Tell them that you do not want to be- It's 2023 and you're wearing the badge, so tell them are you making fun of yourself here? Residents of East Palestine, Ohio, attended a massive town hall tonight to talk about the ongoing issues they're facing as a result of the train derailment and subsequent chemical spill that occurred almost two weeks ago. In attendance were, you know, like relevant experts, government officials, uh, elected representatives, all people who are trying to essentially answer questions and figure out what they can do to help. But one party was notably absent, Norfolk Southern. 
See, the company uh, responsible for the train derailment and the environmental catastrophe that the residents of East Palestine, Ohio, and the region broadly are now facing decided not to show up. Instead, they sent a message that said, unfortunately, after consulting with community leaders, we have become increasingly concerned about the growing physical threat to our employees and members of the community around this event, stemming from the increasing likelihood of the participation of outside parties. With that in mind, Norfolk Southern will not be in attendance this evening. We want to continue our dialogue with the community and address their concerns, and our people will remain in East Palestine, respond to this situation, and meet with residents. I want to say first and foremost, um, absolutely fucking irredeemably unacceptable. Also deeply ironic that a company with no employees living in East Palestine who caused an environmental catastrophe that is poisoning the entire town would not show up due to the physical risk to their employees due to outside actors. It's nothing more than a corporation telling that community, fuck you, we do not want to take active responsibility for the problems that we caused. Members of the community uh, discussed, amongst other things, waking up with burning airways, their kids being covered in rashes. Some of them were actively crying as they gave their accounts, and the company responsible was nowhere to be fucking found. Words do not describe how that makes me feel and how it should make all of us feel. That is irredeemable. In a just society, every executive at Norfolk Southern would be sitting in a fucking jail cell for criminal negligence. But somehow, they've been able to pretty much get away scot-free with poisoning at least 5,000 fucking people. And you know what? It makes sense when you consider what's been going on. The president still hasn't even released a single statement. It took 10 days for the Secretary of Transportation to say fucking anything. Norfolk Southern is acting like a company that is expecting to face zero consequences for their actions because they know damn well that's the case. And because of that lack of accountability, thousands of working class men, women, and children are living through an environmental catastrophe where they are being actively fucking poisoned. We live in a system where a company can actively poison thousands and not a single executive be held actively accountable in the moment. Think about that. Something has to change, not just for the sake of East Palestine, Ohio residents and the surrounding areas. It has to change for the sake of all of us. I'm just fucking angry. And I think we all should be. Anyway, have a good day. From leftists, you'll often hear stuff like, it's not my job to educate you. But like, if you claim to be a leftist who wants to make the world a better place, it probably is your job to educate people who don't know as much as you on leftist causes. This doesn't mean that privileged bodies get to, like, demand intellectual performance out of marginalized people. Rather, if you're a leftist, you're talking to a white man who's like, white privilege doesn't exist. You can't just be like, it's not my job to educate you, don't worry about it. Fucking try, you know? Like, it's obviously not easy, but just, like, you know, keep trying. I found that sending them episodes of television or movies, or at the very least, like, little YouTube videos, that goes fucking, that, that is so much easier than a lot of times, like, actually explaining that shit to these people. You don't have to be skinny to be pretty. You don't have to be skinny to be pretty. You don't have to be skinny. You don't have to be skinny. You don't have to be skinny to be pretty. A day in the life without white inventions. Cause y'all stay mad. Starting off by doing my hair. I already know today's gonna be a good day. I don't have to worry about being hate crimes so I can wear my quality pride shirt. Since the colonizers aren't around to force their closed minded ideals down our throats. Sunshine and freedom is a top tier combination. I'm taking a drive on this nice sunny day, and so I don't have to worry about the police stopping me for driving while black, because the slave patrol haven't been invented yet. Damn, those badges look familiar. I'm ending my day with a nice stroll through my neighborhood in my favorite hoodie, and not have to worry about being shot because of white fragility and racism. Today was such a peaceful day. I'll be back tomorrow to tell you about. Respect my pronouns or I will stab you. Ah, stop right there. Are you appreciating Elon Musk enough? He doesn't think so. His engagement on Twitter has been down, but his memes have been super epic and dank. When an engineer told him that maybe people have gotten used to the novelty of him buying Twitter and are thus engaging less, he fired the engineer. 
He then told the yet to be fired engineers to change Twitter's programming to boost his and only his tweets. So they boosted his tweets by a factor of 1,000, so they now get around filters for bad tweets. Now you get to see all the jokes that he steals, as well as all the other jokes that he steals, also him replying positively to fascists and also positively to tweets of his own quotes. This is a perfect example of how being extremely rich turns you into an egomaniacal psychopath. The very rich are incentivized to believe that they're special and they deserve the money that they have. Otherwise, Elon Musk would have to look inward and realize that maybe poor people deserve money too and maybe he's not that talented and maybe he's just lucky and that would mean that he's been exploiting people, thousands of people, yummy! PowerPoint that's not really a PowerPoint of celebrities I believe have autism. I will. This is actually really not appropriate. You cannot headcanon real people as autistic. That would be diagnosing them. And you cannot diagnose them because you don't know them. You know the bits and pieces that they have presented to you through PR, through carefully strategized appearances, video posts, statements, but you do not know them and making an entire video theorizing that they are autistic is just drastically inappropriate. Because even if they do have autism and they're just not open about it, you are putting a label on them that forces them to be open and medically disclose. No one should ever have to do that. And on top of that, you're putting a label on them and forcing them to identify with a label that they might not identify with. Again, that's not okay. Headcanoning characters in a show is one thing. You cannot do that with real people. It's not okay. I don't like makeup. I'm against makeup. I don't think it's good for women, and I don't think they really need to be using it, honestly. I... This isn't my usual content, but I, like, have to talk to someone about this. Someone asked me if I knew what the most common squirrel in our area was, and of course I said, this guy. This one, the Eastern Gray Squirrel, you know him, he's a classic, he's the, he's the blue jeans of the wildlife world. He, but, but you guys, the most common squirrel in my area isn't him, it's flying squirrels? Here in Ohio, the southern flying squirrel is our most common squirrel, and my life is a lie, and I don't know how to feel anymore, and the reason why you never see them is because they're nocturnal, and my life is a lie. Good morning to everyone following updates about Norfolk Southern. That would be the company behind the Ohio train derailment, for those who still haven't heard somehow. I want to show you something that I know you guys will find interesting, but before I do, train laborers were trying to stop this. A few months ago, they were trying to strike for better working conditions. All they wanted was a few days off. And Biden and Congress stopped it. Here is your reminder to support train unions and laborers. Okay, let me show you this thing. Let me introduce you to my best friend, Open Secrets. They have a profile on Norfolk Southern. This is the contributions and lobbying they did for the last election cycle. You can see the top recipients, but if you go down, all recipients, scroll down. You can filter this by candidate, and you can see every single candidate that they have put money behind. Every single one. If a rep sees this, um, overturn Citizens United, now. Shit like this brings the movement down. Everyone's a feminist until there is a spider around.